Void 3.0 is still one of the top subclasses that I use for hardcore content in game because of how powerful they are with bringing you great survival. Warlocks can get a constant health regen, Titans can make overshield for days, and Hunters can go in this, which isn't a big thing since they've always been able to do that. But what if I told you that the new Hunter Exotic release this season can make going in this even more beneficial? You can get a 35% damage buff by simply exiting your invis, gain a reserve overshield for you and your allies, I can also gain an improved class ability regen by simply pulling off a finisher. Let me just say that if you're looking for an aggressive version of the Omnilocinus, the Gyro Falcon Hullbuck is something you'll want to aim for and get for end game, because trust me, this build paired with Omni user can bring out some hefty synergy not seen before with Hunters. But you know what else will bring you the ultimate wombo combo for your hunter builds? This channel right here. So if you enjoy the content, then please leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on future content. I would really appreciate it. Starting with the subclass, we will be using Mobius Quiver for its quick burst damage and effectiveness against bosses. The build, like many other invis builds, only requires a certain amount of things to make it work, and one of them is just being invis as much as you can. As you'll soon see, with how I maximise my invisibility, you'll be able to get a constant damage buff in a short time frame, while still being cloaked and effective in the long run. For this, you'll want to run with Vanishing Step, which will allow you to go invis by dodging. Then you'll want Trapper's Ambush, which can allow you to go invis and weaken others while doing a dive attack. You can also use your Smoke Bomb feature to go invis as well, so three ways to go about this. Fragments wise, you'll want Echo Remnants, which will increase your grenade duration, Echo Domineering, where after suppressing a target, you get increased mobility and weapons are reloaded, and Echo of Undermining, where your Void Grenades weaken targets. For stats, you want to aim for 100 mobility, 70 to 100 discipline, and 60 in strength. You want to make your mobility your top priority because of how fast your class ability region can go, and how fast you can proc invis alongside of it. Also, it's much more reliable to use in endgame content without being taken out so quickly while out in the open. Key mods to focus on is Bountiful Well for plus 2 worlds created, Elemental Ordnance for creating worlds via grenade kills, Font of Wisdom for a plus 15 intellect stat regen over time, Powerful Friends for a plus 20 in mobility and additional bonuses, and Radiant Light for a plus 20 in strength and additional bonuses. All of this will allow you to have a near 10 second cooldown the moment you go invis through just normal means, but the moment you activate your exotic special ability while invis, cooldown goes by to around 5 seconds roughly. This will allow you to spam invis non-stop and get that damage bonus from the start of a fight to the very end. And the fact that you could add on Font of Might to the damage buff as well for even more damage alongside it means that you could become a DPS monster in the right environment. So let's go over the weapons you use, which for now can be anything you ideally like, as most people aren't ready for endgame just yet. So for primary, we have the Osteo Strigger SMG, which is a really great weapon for add clear and constant damage over time once you activate its exotic traits. The moment you overflow the magazine, you can use the weapon as a kinetic DPS against bosses, as it can inflict high and ongoing damage with its poison effect active. Although we don't have a seasonal mod for this weapon this time round, it can still be used in its activities with little to no champions around. The damage buff we get with Azoto pretty much means that anyone hit by it will be dead within a few shots or less, so definitely worth the investment. Secondary, we have the Pointed Inquiry Scout Rifle with 4th time the charm and adapted munitions, and this is my go-to weapon for Grandmaster or any higher tier content in game. Great weapon to have as it can cover all my bases without me needing to use a certain weapon type, and can be craftable if you get the needed patterns to do so. However, the new Kingsfall Vase Scout Rifle has become even more better than this weapon and actually overtakes the effectiveness of endgame use of it. Both weapons are different by perk, pull, and frame types, but for those that haven't got the chance to get the Raid Scout at all yet, then this version is much more easier to farm and use. Now, heavy, we have the Storm Chaser near Fusion with Clown Cartridge and Frenzy, and this is another great DPS weapon that everyone that has access to the latest dungeon should try and farm for. Since it shoots off 3 bolts within 1 round, you'll be getting a higher DPS count for each critical hit landed, plus it's also good for ammo rotation over time. You may have heard that the Tapian in the Fusion is also pretty good to use, and I would recommend you try and get one for yourself, as it's void and will do well with the following build in terms of high DPS straight out of the pack. For stats as mentioned, you'll want to focus on mobility and get that to max so you can benefit from the invis as long as possible. 
Now, depending on how you play it, you can reduce your mobility stat to, say, 70 or even 80, as long as you are reactivating your class ability Exotic every so often. The Gyro Falcon ability, See Me, Feel Me, allows users to get an increased class ability region when you are in this and get a finisher on a target. This means that if you're going to use your finisher non-stop on targets, then you can reduce your mobility as you see fit, and you will still get a very fast cooldown shortly. For Discipline now, try and aim for 80 as you want to use your grenades as much as possible so you can weaken targets fast, but also so you can utilize your finisher move and constantly keep yourself and your team on the go. You could on the other hand reduce this down to say 60 or 70 and balance this out with your strength stat as well since both of these will be used constantly to keep the flow of the build going as this will be recommended as you want to use all your abilities at once. If you wish to keep your discipline stat at 80 but wish to have a 50 to 40 strength but still have a relatively fast cooldown then this alternative may help. So having the invigoration perk can help with reducing melee regen over time and then using outreach and one two finisher together can allow you to filter your melee regen there and then while not being so costly. Although one two finisher does take one sixth of your super upon use, this is why we have the frontal wisdom mod on spare so we can navigate the cost behind it. At the same time we do also have the harmonic and kinetic cypher mod for creating orbs or power via matching elemental type or kinetic. So all of this in keeping your strength stat as high as possible without the need to heavily invest into armor stats alone. This should be easily achievable for all and you don't need to worry about armor stats unless you need to get your mobility and discipline stat up which in this case is fairly easy to do. Also don't forget that we have the elemental world being created as well which will yield you a high regen as well for your abilities so if you follow what I have you should be getting your abilities back fairly quickly. Leftover wise we have Bombless Bounty which will extend the effective use of Soul Drinker when they opt into using any weapon with an origin trait and Linear Fusion Scavenger mod for reserve ammo for the given weapon type. This should summarize everything about the stat section you need so here are the mods compiled into one for you. For Head Wheel Resilience, Homolex Siphon or Connect Siphon mod, Bottomless Bounty and Powerful World mod, R we have Recovery and Elemental Ordnance mod, Chest we have Discipline, Thermal Shot Plating because of Damnell from the Wisdom mod, Leg with Minor Discipline, Linear Fusion Scavenger, Invigoration and Powerful Friends mod, Cloak we have Recovery, Outreach, 1-2 Finisher and Radiant Light mod. What makes the exotic special is that compared to Omnoculus, which requires users to go in this and get a huge damage reduction and mini energy back, the Drive Falcons does the opposite and pushes players to be more aggressive to make use of that damage worth you get. Although the timer is short, this isn't anything to worry about as you can reapply the damage buff as long as you activate the one of many ways to go in this. The one you're seeing right now is basic but straight to the point and allows users to reposition themselves and then make use of their damage once done. This may seem like I'm playing a more safer role, which is what I'm currently doing as I want to support my team as best as possible, but I can switch this up and play more aggressive by utilizing the stylish execution ability to go invis once a target is weakened, suppressed or volatile and then add on things to extend their timer or the debuff effects. This one simple change can allow players to effectively lock down areas with ease while still getting a non-stop damage buff. In PvP, it can straight up make certain weapons kill within a few shots less, and in PvE, you're getting a damage buff, reserve over shield and class ability regen all by going invis and all for free. Plus, you can get your damage buff when someone else makes you invis as well, so in an effective landscape, you can stay buffed as long as you keep the flow going. I honestly can't wait to show you my endgame version of the build as this will make GMs for the season a whole lot easier in the long run, so stay tuned for more. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny news and content. Once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.